Hey guys, Postron here. And today let's talk about the third balance manifesto for 3.20 regarding Eldritch Altars. And this one is a little bit concerning to say the least. Now, obviously we don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm gonna do my best to kind of summarize what's in this post, what I think will happen. Uh, but this time they give a few more examples than they usually do, maybe because of the criticism that their last manifestos needed a Q&A afterwards. Uh, but let's get into it. Now, let's at least start off on a positive note here. There's going to be less bad rewards, um, which means they basically removed some of the less desirable outcomes, which are going to be gems, influenced items, unique items. Um, yeah, gems and maps in general, which on first glance is pretty nice, right? Because stuff like map currency, divination cards uh, can be pretty lucrative. Um, but the problem is they also nerfed scarabs at the same time. And the wording they use here is very concerning when coming from GDG. Scarabs will be offered a lot less. Um, <laughs> if you don't know, usually when they say something is nerfed a lot, it means it's basically removed. I hope I'm wrong here, but that's just usually what it means. Uh, reminds me of a few things in the past. Um, then again, we have this thing here. It seems like there's going to be the same amount of mobs, but more altars, which might mean war rewards. And I'm saying might is because obviously the amount of rewards you get per reward. Uh, what I'm basically saying is you get more reward chances. So this refers to uh, this line here. The amount of influence packs spawned by altars has been reduced by 33%, right? So 66% of what it was. And if you multiply that by 1.5, because there's more altars spawning, you would go back to the usual amount. So in general, that should mean you get more rewards uh, because you're clicking on more different altars and they kind of stack on top of each other, but probably not because they're also talking about overall reducing the amount of rewards you get in general. Now, I don't think this is actually going to come to fruition, to be honest. It's just something that I read out of here. Uh, but one thing that makes me a little skeptical is that they didn't touch map currency. And map currency was one of the best rewards, if not the best reward in total, because of how many awakened sextons um, and just how many uh, map currencies in general you can get. However, a paragraph that makes me very suspicious is this one here. Um, basically, altars will not give you generic rewards anymore. It will actually say what it has. So that means, for example, instead of having map boss drops free currency items, you will now see map boss drops free Val Orbs. And I'm pretty sure that's just their way of saying we're going to rebalance those rewards. For example, you'll see a lot less Awakened Sextants, which I think overall will be a huge problem. Now, one thing with these rewards being easier distinguishable, as I just said, um, also means that you have to think more during the map. For you, this might just be an upside, uh, but usually the way I like to play is I don't like to think all the time. Uh, if I want to play for hours and hours on end, I don't really want to make these like decisions in every single map. However, even if you are somebody who likes to do that, we still have the betrayal problem, which I coined after the problem that kind of came up ever since betrayal was in the game, which is you want to interact with something, but the time does not stop around you. So things are just jumping at you while you're trying to make a decision, which is pretty damn annoying. Overall, probably not a big deal. Just something I kind of had to think about here because usually those are league mechanics I hate. Um, and then a big downside here might also be that Eldritch Currencies would be more expensive. I'm talking about the tier one Eldritch currencies here because the higher tier currencies are definitely going to be harder to get. Um, we'll talk about that in a second when it comes to Wrath of the Cosmos changes. Um, but yeah, we don't really know, right? This is a lot of like, whatever. Uh, overall, they said they want to lightly reduce the rewards. Uh, my initial feeling here is that we're going to see quite a bit of a difference, which I think might be a problem because while altars, in my opinion, were too strong compared to other ways of making currency, um, that's not really a good reason because I feel like a lot of the currency that other methods had were kind of stripped away. There was always things that you could do, but altars were just so strong that they were in every single um, strat, but that didn't make any strat OP. So what does that mean? That usually means that altars were too strong, but if you don't compensate on other ends, it's going to be pretty bad. I was talking about some other random things that were introduced here that are pretty important to know they try to increase the boss rewards in general. So boss rushing was a thing. You get to the boss, you kill the boss, and then the boss options are not there anymore, which is usually good because the other two options were simply better. And don't get me wrong, this could work out. It could not work out. I can't really say much at this point. Uh, something that robbed me a little bit the wrong way, though, is this sentence here. Uh, this is one of those cases where the most efficient and rewarding gameplay strategy undermines the expected gameplay loop and encourages players to do things that aren't really fun. Now, from a company that basically idolizes Diablo 2, it is a little bit weird to hear that doing the same thing over and over and over again, for example, in this case, boss rushing is not something that they consider fun. It's also weird that they think nobody else has fun because of that. I'm not really sure. I personally have a lot of fun boss rushing. I think it was a very interesting way to play the game. It kind of just breaks up the usual map cycle. I think that this is just an excuse for them not wanting to balance boss rushing because that is kind of hard. It can be overly 
rewarding. Sure. So I have no idea how they are going to balance this. It might be trash. It might be good. We don't know exactly. One more thing that we do know is that they want to make uh, Maven a little bit more interesting. In specific, Maven invitations, because what they wanted to do is that altars get worse and Maven invitations get better. So you have more incentive to actually pick the Maven invitation beacon. And I'm not sure this will help as much as they think it does, but basically Maven witnessed bosses have a chance to drop an Awaken gem. And this includes also the ones that usually only Maven can drop. A pretty big problem I have with this is that Awaken gems are usually not something we need that many of in the economy. Some of these gems usually fall off like an absolute brick. Like these used to be chase items. And now we're looking at most of them being like, I don't know, the chase ones being like 100, 150 chaos because they're already so devalued. Um, so I don't really know. Um, even if they drop quite often, that means they just get even more devalued. I'm not really sure this is going to close the gap, even if altars are worse now. Um, so I think Maven Invitations might still have to sit this one out for League. And we have some good news, which is we get a 3 to 1 Scarab recipe. Finally, we can upgrade those Rusteds. Um, we also get an upgrade button in the stash tab. So if you don't have a fragment stash tab, it might be worth now. Um, now, I think they also, yeah. So they also said this here that Rusted Scarabs are now in the core drop pool, which is going to be really nice. The devaluation of Rusted Scarabs was only bad because there was no 3 to 1 recipe. So overall... Gilded Scarabs should be a lot more affordable now. Unless they actually drop really, really infrequently. And then we have the problem that the altars just got nerfed. Then we have a rework of Wrath of the Cosmos. Now, Wrath of the Cosmos was a really strong keystone that basically rewarded you for being tanky. Uh, however, what they figured out, what actually happened most of the time, is that people would just completely suicide their maps. Which is true, right? If the reward is too big, then people will actually just suicide for the reward no matter what because you're on softcore, and that will lead to very weird gameplay. Um, now, what they basically changed this one to is um, it's a lot more similar to the other Keystone now. It's basically a reverse. Each altar now has 50% chance for an additional upside. Altars with an additional upside will have the downside effect increased by 100%. And this one here is Eldritch altars have an additional downside, but 50% increased effect of upside. So it's basically just like Mirad, which I think is a fine idea in general, having a dynamic where one is not stronger than the other, otherwise it's a little bit awkward. Which feeds me into my next point. Uh, a huge nerf to these keystones is that you can now not use both keystones anymore. It's basically like, I guess it's intended to, like it was. I don't know. You can only use Eldritch Gaze if you have Eldritch Influence, and you can only use Rav of the Cosmos if you have Searing Exarch Influence. And that is actually pretty insane of a nerf. And um, <laughs> I just want to... I just want to get your attention to this sentence right here. Just to explicitly call a spade a spade, this is a nerf to how much you can scale your rewards from these keystones. If you were one of the subset of players who were ta taking both keystones in the past. I just had to quickly Google what subset actually means, right? Because I could just be um, misunderstanding here. But yeah, I had to Google it and it does actually mean a portion and a division. Whereas I would say mostly everybody, right? Not a subset in late game was using both keystones. Now, sure, if you just started out, you're probably not going to take Wrath of the Cosmos right away. But let's be real. In end game, this is going to be a huge nerf. Let's talk about my conclusion and my thoughts on this, uh, kind of like connecting the dots. Um, this sounds a lot more like a rough nerf and not like they say a light nerf, which is really annoying because uh, the Maven influence buffs did not really compensate enough in my opinion just throwing in more awakened gems is not going to make anything better it's just going to devalue them uh, it could obviously be nice for leak start you can get your gems earlier but realistically this will not really make an impact and maven influence will still be extremely weak uh the wrath of the cosmos nerf only being allowed to do one keystone on top of the other nerfs might be um yeah just a little bit too much we'll have to see until we see the numbers so far i'm a little bit skeptical overall the scarab quality of life is pretty nice although it feels like something that should have been in the game already um now on the positive note i will want to say here that the league mechanic might actually save it if we think back to 3.19 a lot of the reasons we got no rewards was because lake of calandra was super unrewarding Think back one leak earlier, Sentinel was absurdly rewarding. One of the most rewarding leaks ever. Um, so that just kind of gets you this divide between how good the league mechanic is. And it's just really important. But if it fails or if it's something that is not at all like connected to maps, um, sort of like Delft, then we might have a problem. Or at least mapping wise, right? Um, one consequence of reducing flat rewards on stuff like altars that usually don't scale with MF is... Kind of like in relation, MF gets even better. And I already voiced my disdain for Magic Find in general. 
Um, I think this will just make things worse because flat rewards, MF usually doesn't scale. Well, if there is less flat rewards, there's less incentive not to go MF, right? So that could also be a problem. Uh, in the end, we have to temper our expectations here. I think a lot of this will basically revolve around how good the lead mechanic is. But for the future, this might give a huge damp uh, onto mapping profits in general. But yeah, uh, hard to know. Tell me what you think down in the comments and thank you for watching. And that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do videos like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. And yeah, oof. About as bad as I thought it would be. I had a feeling. I mean, um, altars were kind of insane for a long time now. The problem is you can't just buff them up and don't give anything in return. That's really, really rough. I really thought the Maven influence needed a lot more uh, than just a little bit of Vogue gems sprinkled in there. But then again, we'll see whenever patch notes comes out and we can actually play the new patch. Uh, with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, 